This is something we absolutely need to talk about because this could break Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi 4 at launch. Prepare yourself, Tensei. Now with the release of Budokai Tenkai Ichi 4 slowly progressing and even Dragon Ball going to Comic-Con in under a month, we are getting closer and closer to finding out everything we need to know about this game. What do the graphics in action actually look like? What are going to be the features? Are they going to bring back some of the features from Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkai Ichi 3? How many characters are we going to get at launch? How many characters are going to be DLC or expansions? And what timeline does this game actually cover? But the one thing that really is going to make or break it for this game is not how many characters that this game actually is going to have, but how many stages is this game going to include? How many maps are we going to have? Now I know this generation is the Xenoverse generation and when it comes to maps, you guys really haven't had that many options. And when I say this, I mean like early on, you really didn't have not even close to as much as Budokai Tenkaichi did. As the years have progressed, we've gotten here and there a few more, but really the variation that Budokai Tenkaichi had after three games has not been even close to surpassed by Xenoverse and its hundreds of DLCs. We need maps, we need a lot of options here, we're gonna need as many maps as possible. I would happily, happily enjoy more maps at the very start of this game and forego more characters than have a lot of characters and only like two or three maps to choose from. Ideally I would like to have both in quantity but I know for a fact that they're going to nickel and dime this game like they did Xenoverse. So today we're going to be talking about what are the maps that are 100% essential for Budokai Tenkaichi 4 to have. And I'm just gonna throw it out there, every single map that I'm going to be throwing out there needs to be interactive in some way. You should be able to manipulate its surroundings similarly to Budokai Tenkaichi, similar to Dragon Ball Fighters. Now I know a lot of you guys are gonna want the Universe 6 tournament stage. It is kind of iconic. I mean, if you watch Dragon Ball Super and only watch the beginning, it is like the first bit of new content that did not come from the movies. And as much as I want that stage there, I think that the Tournament of Power is the stage that needs to be on there. This is the stage that most most of what people remember after watching all of Super, they're gonna remember this. This is the ending of Super. This is where all, everything happened in this. We got new powers for each character. We got new techniques. Old characters became relevant all of a sudden. New characters came out of nowhere. New beings, new villains. And it was just, it was just such a good time, guys. And the Tournament of Power works perfect with what Budokai Tenkaichi did with its maps. Back in Budokai Tenkaichi, we had a map and then we had variations to that map that you can jump into. We had like in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, or a map that was the planet as it normally would be, then the planet slowly dying, and then the planet destroyed. We had multiple variations on the same exact map. The Torment of Power is one of the few places that has multiple variations throughout its run. We get the original Torment of Power stage, then we get when it turns all green, and that happens for a while, and that's normally what we see and what we remember from the entire Goku versus Kefla thing. And then at the end, we get the broken down stage, the stage that ends the Tournament of Power and sees Android 17 become the winner. The next stage is actually one that to me had a version of it in Budokai Tenkaichi 4. It was called the Glacier Stage and it was just ice. It was essentially where Goku and the Z Fighters fought a hillbilly android that is one of the funniest Team 4 Star sketches that we've ever seen. This one, however, needs to be Broly's stage. This is probably, in my opinion, one of the most iconic stages for anything after Dragon Ball Super's anime. It is a movie that had the entirety of it be in the North Pole, 
it has multiple stages where first we get ice, then we get lava, and it could even end when they go into that parallel dimension that breaks reality and Gogeta and Broly are fighting in it. Or hell, it could be the broken down lava stage, but in the morning like it is at the end of the movie. This is an essential stage to have because you need to have this stage because I know for a fact that Budokai Tenkaichi 4 is going to have Broly from the very beginning. Right? Right? Just to cover my bases on the movies, guys, I know that we have a lot of fans here for superhero. We are going through the superhero manga, so I can't really, like, not put anything from the superhero movie at all. And the most iconic battlefield on that screen was when they were fighting at the Red Ribbon headquarters. That has multiple stages as well. We get normal rainy stage where we have the red ribbon headquarters with a bunch of rain this is gohan's iconic scene in the movie then we have the normal stage where the, the sun comes out and we fight through all those caverns and all around the entire map and arena then we have the ending where cell max basically explodes everything and it's just like, like a giant crater but still that's like three stages right there and i'm completely on a roll here when it comes to stages now i really wanted a stage for moro moro is my favorite arc in the entirety of dragon ball super even though it's not my favorite characters you know my favorite character is goku black it is my favorite arc it feels the most like dragon ball z like old school dragon ball z that's why i love it so much but when it comes to stages it's not really like the most stand out ish stage like it doesn't stand out to you like the only part to me that seems unique and would be really cool would be planet namek when moro first arrives there and you're fighting moro and then he starts using the planet against you that would be kind of cool to have another namek stage that is on new namek I, I mean i want all these stages to begin with but that would be pretty cool but the one that i think would be even cooler and a lot more awesome would be a stage on planet serial now hear me out stage one would be the prequel serial and what i'm saying with that is that we want the uzaru invasion on planet serial where they're destroying buildings this is where bardock faces off against gas and we have uh you know granola's mom sacrificing herself this stage is the prequel of planet serial i think that having uzaru's in the background destroying everything that would be kind of cool and it is at, at night so it is a little bit more unique than what we normally got then next would be in my opinion the actual city that vegeta and granola fight in i think that the ruins of planet serial it's something that is so it's so connected to vegeta and who his people are and what they've done that is such a huge part of the entire of the entire granola arc i i love that i love that battle in that city and i and i want to see that in the actual game and lastly would just be the outskirts of the city where we get gas's end to black frieza who's obviously going to be in the game and i think that would be a really cool ending part for this map at the end of the day guys i want as many characters and as many maps as possible in this game and if you guys have a map that you really 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 want to see let me know in the comments section below we can go ahead and all talk about it but that's all i got for you guys today is going to be blackscape signing off take care guys subscribe for more content